All right, let's take a look at the, the, the video, the patch. The video for the patch. I haven't actually seen it yet. Good luck. It's had many bright moments. Update 1.10 is the next big step for the game. It's so big that we want to get right to the point without any further delay. Let's begin. The first big new feature is the fully reworked equipment system. The changes will be apparent the moment you launch the game. Now the number of slots for equipment and consumables depends on the vehicle's tier. Neither will be available for tier 1 vehicles. These vehicles can't experience fires, their crews can't be injured, and the modules can't be damaged, except for suspension, but even that's for a shorter time. At Tier 2, you can mount one equipment item and one consumable. The crew is still invulnerable, but modules can be damaged. Fires can also happen, but they deal reduced damage. At Tier 3, there are two slots for equipment and consumables. Fires still deal reduced damage. And starting at Tier 4, all three slots are available for both equipment and consumables. Module damage and fire mechanics return to normal from here on. Like before, you can mount any equipment items available for the vehicle in these slots. <clears throat> equipment itself is divided into four categories. Firepower, survivability, mobility, and scouting. Starting at Tier 6, the first slot is designated as one of these categories. It is depends it on the vehicle type, <clears throat> survivability for heavy tanks, mobility for medium tanks, scouting for light tanks, and firepower for SPGs and tank Why destroyers. Why do I not five? If you mount an equipment item of the Doesn't same category much. in this slot, it will provide an improved effect. There are new equipment items, while some old equipment and their bonuses were combined. The new equipment allows you to create previously unavailable combinations that improve your vehicle in very different ways. Some of them can considerably change typical battle behaviors. Most equipment is divided into three classes featuring different prices and tier availability. The camouflage net and spall liner are the exceptions to this. With this update, the old equipment will be replaced with new equipment based on the reworked system. All improved equipment on your vehicles will be automatically unmounted and moved to the depot. All players will receive demounting kits for free to reconfigure their vehicles. Additional kits may be obtained by completing daily missions or... Wait, so why are we getting demounting kits if they're all demounted? Purchasing with credits. I mean, it's fine. It's good. You can learn but... more in a separate video and in a special article on the portal. The updated equipment system gives players a chance to experiment and create new Yeah, for testing tactics. experimenting, I guess. That yeah. includes tactics using the latest vehicles. Yeah. New mediums, Buck Jim. The new Polish medium tanks are the stars of update 1.10. Six vehicles from Tier 5 to Tier 10 are ready to blast onto the battlefield. The branch starts from the 14 TP. The first vehicle is the DSPZ Eans at Tier 5. It looks and feels like the Soviet T-34, but it has the gun of the 25 TP. With good penetration and high damage per shot, it's a great beginning to a great path. The next vehicle in the branch has a fun name, the BUGI or the buggy. Buggy. Playing in it is also fun. Just buggy. remember not to get too excited and forget to hide your high profile. At tier 7, players will find the CS I love how this one looks the for some reason. damage per shot from its 100 mm gun will let you exchange hit points with enemies at a favorable rate. Next is the CS53, a medium tank with a truly Polish spirit and almost no compromises. Its great gun with minus eight degrees of depression allows it to use terrain as a stepping stone to great victories. The tier nine CS-59 vehicle behaves in a similar way on the battlefield. Oof, best looking thing in the factory coming through. Enable it to take positions that are not suitable for other vehicles of the same tier. But for the CS-59, it's just right. 
The top vehicle in the branch is the CS-63. It combines all the best characteristics of its predecessors. Good damage per shot and DPM. Nice accuracy. Minus 8 degrees of gun depression. Nice dynamics. But it has one feature that sets it apart from other Polish vehicles and all other vehicles in the game. It has a gas turbine engine with two modes, standard and rapid. In standard mode, the CS-63 is a classic medium tank. But by switching to rapid mode, the engine power, acceleration, and top speed increase. The CS-63 practically becomes a light tank. What the fuck? <laughs> of course, high speed comes at a price. First off, the switch between modes is not instantaneous. To change the engine mode, you need to come to a complete stop. Second, rapid mode causes the gun characteristics to drop considerably. The stabilization and aiming time don't allow it to shoot like normal. Finally, in rapid mode, the vehicle is more likely to be spotted. But they should have done that at the wheels. <laughs> players to perform tactical maneuvers that cannot be done by other medium tanks, such as taking the best positions at the beginning of a battle, or changing positions mid-battle, or performing sudden flanking attacks, and always being where help is most needed. The gas turbine engine really allows the CS-63 to shine. The new Polish mediums will soon take I think they should do that to wheels when they're in the mode attacks. to go really fast. The top vehicle might just become a favorite among those who like this vehicle type. Aside from new vehicles, this update also includes balance changes. The Object 430U and the Progetto 65, as well as their predecessors, the Object 430 and the Standard B, are pretty good high-tier vehicles. But, as statistics and player feedback show, they are often too good. So, in order to balance sure, buddy, their player feedback compared to other vehicles, sure, buddy. we decided to tweak some characteristics. The armor of the gunners and commanders' cupolas was reduced on the Object 430U. They are now easier to penetrate. <laughs> and firing on the move and during turret traverse <laughs> is less effective because of increased dispersion. And that's an actual nerf. The, tier the armor, not so much, I think. Oh, also okay. had its dispersion increased. Noticeable balance changes were also made to the Progetto 65. Now its turret traverse is slower. Aiming time is slower, and dispersion is higher, including dispersion after firing. The standard B was changed in a similar way. Also, you can no longer mount a gun rammer on any Italian vehicle with an auto reloader. The vehicles will still be able to maximize the advantages of the auto reloading system, but with corrected efficiency. This also concerns the Progetto M35 Mod 46 Premium Vehicle. But in its case, the gun characteristics were changed as if a standard gun rammer had been mounted on the vehicle, and the now empty slot can be filled with something else. With the release of Equipment 2.0, there will be a lot of options. You can learn more about all the changes in the article on the portal. The balance changes will slightly clip the wings of all four of these vehicles, but their key features will be fully preserved. The same goes for another vehicle type. We remove the wheelies. Yeah. Wheeled vehicles have been quite controversial among players for some time. Sometimes these vehicles act too aggressively on the battlefield without any visible drawbacks. Sometimes. With update <laughs> 1.10, players will have to be more cautious when using them. Now, damaged wheels slow the vehicle down more significantly, and slow vehicles I do like this targets. as a nerf, but I'm not sure if it's enough. The damage mechanics also affected the Panar EBR 75 FL10 premium vehicle. However, it's compensated with specific physics settings. The behavior of this vehicle is the same in the new system as it was before. <laughs> Additionally, the general acceleration <laughs> dynamics and top speed of wheeled uh... vehicles have decreased, as well as the effectiveness of their guns. Wait, now what? these vehicles are not as big of a threat, and the cost of... Wait, they nerfed the speed of all of them? I didn't know that. Wait. General acceleration dynamics and top speed of wheeled vehicles have decreased. What? As top well speed as of all of them? Of their guns. What? Now these vehicles are not as big of a threat, 
and the cost of risky maneuvers went up considerably. But update 1.10 also introduces some positive changes to the characteristics of some vehicles. Man, I can't believe I'm here. I survived this game long enough to see Ewan Unruh getting buffed. Heavy tanks of three nations have found their second wind. The IS-4, the T-110E5, the E-100, and several other vehicles from their branches have received a long-awaited characteristics boost. Oh! I got two buffs. The IS-4 still works oh! best as a frontline tank. It's harder to penetrate head-on, and the turret and hull now move faster, which will allow the vehicle... So, shorter reload, shorter aim time, but less accurate. And Holland turret armoring. ...to react quicker to changing situations. The top gun is now more suitable for close quarters combat. It's slightly less accurate, but it aims and reloads faster. Additionally, the dispersion on turret and hull traverse decreased. The characteristics of other vehicles in the branch, the ST-1, the KV-4, and the KV-3 were the also changed get buffed? regarding close combat. The, what? the T-110E5 is still the same universal soldier with good armor and imposing firepower. But it now has higher damage per minute and lower dispersion. Okay. The M103 and T32 have also become forces to be reckoned with on the battle. Finally, a gun buff for the DV2 man. Super heavy E100 was improved in the places where it was most expected. The front of the turret received additional armor. It's no longer so there easy you to go. penetrate the E100's cheeks. In addition, the vehicle received an updated alternative gun that's better suited for close combat. It's not. It's better suited for close combat. Are they saying that the derp gun is better at sniping? What? Wait. <laughs> Wait. For close combat. What? What? Wait. <laughs> it's not as accurate, but it has a better rate of fire and higher damage. And the Wait, this is less accurate than the derp? What the fuck is going on here, bro? All we want, all they, all, you know, it would have been really sick. Listen, chat. You know, it would have been, you know, it would have been super, ultra, mega fucking dank if they put the Yak Tiger gun on E100 as a secondary gun. That would have been lit. 15 centimeter gun now aims faster. The E100 became more comfortable to play in. Other vehicles in the branch starting I mean, from I, tier I like, 6 now have... If that other gun is like a faster firing gun, which it is, I might actually check out the E100, because that's kind of cool, because I hate that long reload. Better, more effective guns. And on top of that, each vehicle had its turret armor improved. Oh my god, VK buffs. You can learn more about all the changes in the article on the portal. And when you join the battle in the revamped tier 10s, you'll suddenly realize that you're earning more bonds now. And it's not only about the improved effectiveness of the vehicles. With update 1.10, the old system of earning bonds was replaced with a new one. Previously, players could get bonds in different ways, but there were only two permanently available possibilities. Same tier battles in tier 10 vehicles or earning epic or battle hero achievements in vehicles tier 4 and higher. But you couldn't predict how many bonds you would get by the end of the battle in either case. Because there's no guarantee you'll get into a same tier battle or that you'll perform well enough. The new system is more transparent and predictable. Now, bonds are no longer credited for medals and achievements, but you can get them when playing in tier 10 vehicles and grand battles or any random battle. What? Even when there are tier eight and nine vehicles, the rules Wait. are clear and simple. Players in the top- Wait, I can no longer get bonds in lower tier? That's stupid. Not even tier nines. That is fucked up.
top three on the winning team by experience earned receive seven bonds. Players in the top 10 earn five bonds. If it's a defeat or a draw, the number of bonds will be slightly different. Five for the top three and three for the top 10. In grand battles, the conditions are similar. The only difference is that- <laughs> In grand battles. Imagine thinking you need to explain this. No one plays it, bro. Relax. You have to get to the top 20 or top 6 on your team by experience earned. Every tier 10 vehicle can earn up to 100 bonds each week. The current number of earned bonds can be seen by hovering the mouse cursor over a vehicle in the carousel. The value is reset every Monday morning and you can go hunting for bonds again. The new system allows for a clearer understanding of bond crediting mechanics. Okay, here's the thing. They should have just adopted this to all the tiers. I think. But I guess the argument would be the people are gonna sue club for bonds. But honestly, go good luck still clubbing at tier six, dude. With all the M44 spam. Good fucking luck. I think they should have done this exact same thing for lower tiers, but just a little little bit less spawns. Like at tier five, this should be like three, two, zero. You know what I'm saying? And then this should be like one uh, like two and one. Stuff like that. Not doing any bonds for even tier 9 is stupid beyond belief, to be honest. But I, I like this system. I just don't like it. It's only tier 10. A receipt and the renewed bond store offers more options for spending the earned bond. Oh, look at the Russian tier 8. Wow. With a 122 bill. Wow. It's much more enjoyable going to a location with incredible beauty if you're in a newly purchased rare vehicle. The good old Pearl River map is finally back. After it was removed from the game, it didn't make it to the list of revamped maps for update 1.0, but now it shines in the rays of the eastern sun. The map size is 1,000 by 1,000 meters. It's available for standard and encounter battles in vehicles from tier 3 to tier 10. Pearl River changed not only visually, but also in terms of gameplay. The old version suffered from its corridor like Okay. I just want to say that they keep adding new maps, which is good. But this might be a nuclear take. I think they should start removing maps as well. Even ones that are HD and blah, 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 that are in use right now. I think they should start removing maps. Half map rotations change every month or something. Because with every single map they fucking put in here. So they put this map in now. They put Minsk in last, uh, sorry, Berlin in before that. Every time they do that shit, my map bands get less good. Because my map, map bands are less and less valuable. So I think they should start removing some other maps. Or have some rotation. Like layout. There was not enough space in certain areas. The developers tried to fix this and some other problems by removing two narrow spaces and adding new details. The village on the hill is at the center of the map. This is Hey, you remember in low res when we were flying up in the air with our bird? Is at the center of the map. This is an important spot for seizing the initiative and having lines of fire in many directions. Light and medium tanks will definitely be useful here. Slow and well armored vehicles better go to the gorge. The cover there allows them to use armor more effectively and deliver fire at close range. More maneuverable vehicles will excel in the rice fields, covered by tank destroyers. They Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker. <laughs> they can carry out blistering attacks there. Pearl River returned with a fully revamped look. Now it's time to create new tactics and carry out bold moves, especially considering the new ways allies can coordinate their actions. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about this the one. The system of in-battle communication was reworked to become more clear, informative, and useful. It creates new opportunities and allows for more coordinated team action. If you point the cursor at any spot on the battlefield and press T, an attention to position marker will I appear. can't wait for these motherfuckers to an spam enemy, this. A requesting fire marker will appear above them. If you point it at an ally, a request for support will appear. And if you point it at a base, this is a fun. request for its capture or it defense might be really will appear. Annoying. I already you can hear also that. state your intentions. 
To do so, press F2 in similar situations. You can inform your allies that you're going to move to a certain position, attack a particular opponent, help a selected ally, capture the enemy base... This is really good for teams. platooning, by the way. You can even commit to markers of other players. Just hover the cursor over it and press T. The number of your teammates who are also ready this to commit good. to this action is displayed next to the marker. If you can turn also, off the sounds, it'd be good. You can now good. plan the attack during the countdown before the battle. You can select one of the markers located in key directions and indicate that you're going precisely there. That's Other a bit players of a weird can do the same. The number of players is then displayed. Hey, we can coordinate our living trains. All commands of the new system are available via the command wheel. The lower two are permanent, while the upper two depend on the object the cursor is hovering over. You can even thank any teammates who helped you. If you want to learn more about the new communication system, read the dedicated article on the website or join the battle ah, and the try miss. for yourself. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> and for the lone wolves who rely only on themselves, there's something interesting coming in August. What? Wait. Wolves who rely on you can even thank any teammates who helped you. If you want to learn more about the new communication system, read the dedicated article on the website or join the battle and try it for yourself. And for the lone wolves who rely only on themselves, there's something interesting coming in August. What? Oh, is this too Hunter? You know where my you know where my mind went? It went to a uh, a solo matchmaker where you don't meet platoons. That's where my that's where my mind went there. But do they meet see a seal hunter? That's what it sounds like. No. Am I dumb? They're talking about working together. Then it's like, oh, but the, the lone wolf boys, we got you in August. Only on themselves. There's something interesting coming in August. Sometime after the release of Update 1.10, the second half of the big expedition will become available. Oh boy. Steel Hunter. This well-received mode is back. You can either play solo or in a platoon. Hunt for airdrops, set traps, stage deceiving maneuvers, face enemies head on, and join the intense final clash. All of this is in Steel Hunter, and now it's available on two maps. I got a nuclear take. I got a nuclear warhead take. I think it would be cool if some of these weird tanks like in in several stages don't have doesn't have to be the last stage of it or whatever i think that some of these tanks would be cool premiums fight me in addition to the already familiar dreamland another memorable location will appear arzagir 404 all players can choose from five new tanks divided across three roles sturdy survivalists yeah what the fuck look i'd buy this I buy the fuck out of this. Are you kidding? Here five and six premiums here? I buy the fuck out of them. Sturdy survivalists. Dangerous hunters. And a swift scout. What? Are you kidding? I'd buy this in a heartbeat. What? They have their own unique abilities and combat features. Like before. Tanks turn into more menacing vehicles as the battle progresses. There are now fewer progression levels and tech tree branches. However, thanks to more vehicles, game diversity improved. What the fuck, a get double barrel? For unpredictable battles Did it just get double hunting. barrel? All players will have the opportunity to earn many rewards and tokens to get one of three tier nine reward tanks. The Soviet warrior, Object 777 version two. <sighs> it's the like French a shooter, Battle Royale Future for little things mode. Or the American Universal Soldier, AE phase one. Expedition will be in full swing in August, mm. but that's not the only major event of the month. <laughs> that's the other major event. <laughs> The final act celebrating the 10th anniversary of World of Tanks will start very soon. 
New missions, new entries in the huge Project Chronicle, spectacular customization elements. Why did I keep showing this? This is not how World Tanks looks like at all. <laughs> Ain't nobody brawling in the middle of a field. <laughs> no one, literally no one. And many surprises await, especially for those who have been playing for several years. Mark August 12th in your calendars. It's going to be a big Also, day the field platooning, this it gave you two. Update 1.10 is probably the biggest of this year. And there's a reason for that. The 10th anniversary is a big celebration, and you need to properly prepare for such an occasion. Good luck on the battlefield, commanders. I'm calling it... Loot boxes. Summer loot boxes. Summer loot boxes. I'm calling it right now. Clip it. It looks like an okay update. Pretty big, considering most updates. I think that was a fairly large update, 1.10. <laughs> All right, let me turn on the alerts again. We're got I Some my bet is oh, yeah. summer boxes, summer boxes. That's my uh yep. I'm going with that. Sub Black market and summer boxes. Yes. Sub yes, that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> Polish media marathon grind. Hype. Yeah. Uh, but it comes out tomorrow, doesn't it? I wasn't really thinking about streaming tomorrow, but uh. Yeah, probably, probably not streaming tomorrow, but I will do the free marks on the Polish things. Would... Buy loot boxes on the black market. Dude, they could do a black market where they sell 2018 loot boxes and people would buy them. Imagine. I'm still not sure about the equipment 2.0, to be honest with you guys. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's one of those things where I think I have to play for a while before I can have a real opinion on it. I'm still afraid that some things will be so wonky now that it will, it will decrease like player skill and add a lot more randomness. That's what I'm worried about. The scout equipment is broken. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Hey, wait, actually, you know what I want to see? I want to see those nerfs to the wheelies because there's speeds going down, apparently. I didn't I didn't know that nerf. That's a new one. <laughs> Let's see here. What do we got? Tiger one. I think this is a nerf to a Tiger one. Funnily enough, I think they just nerfed the Tiger one. <laughs> I think they just nerfed the Tiger 1. Congrats. You can nerf Tiger 1. Tiger 1 is actually a good tank, currently. And I think this is, a, this is actually a nerf. Unless the armor gets significantly better, but I don't see it. High class equipment. Dude, I have no idea. Wait, what? That's f Wait, that's weird. This equipment can be demounted for free and remounted on another vehicle of suitable tier. However, you won't be able to remount it on this vehicle. That's fucking weird. Right, VKH got buffed. Congratulations, everyone. The VK got... I, th I think Tiger 1 legitimately got nerfed. VKH got buffed. Yeah, see, wait, the Tiger 1 is not getting a better turret, because it says so here. Right? Armor, armor. Yeah, Tiger... Actually, Tiger 1 legitimately got nerfed. <laughs> they actually nerfed the Tiger 1, in my opinion. You get 80 more for a longer reload and less uh, and more aiming time. But you don't get the armor to back it up. If you if you want to use a gun like this, right, with these stats, then you want to be closer. But you can't because your armor didn't get buffed. So I think it's tag one nerf, personally. All right, let's see. So Tiger Two directly buffed. It now has a 360 alpha with the same reload. That's a pretty pretty nice. Pretty nice. And then improved armoring of the hull and top turret. Sounds good. The top, the armoring of the hull is almost more important than the top turret. Almost. Interesting. Could be significant buff. Uh, armoring on a turret on Ethan fives. That's pretty huge. Uh, a little bit more HP. It doesn't really matter. And then the Tiger Two guns got buffed. And it has some kind of 12.8 centimeter buff, so. Okay. Oh, the aim time of the big gun went down to 2.7. Third armoring. Is, is this enough? I'm not sure if it is, unless this second gun is really good. Uh, we already knew about these, right? Oh, they even nerfed the engine power. I don't know if it needed that. Did they just nerf the tier 9 way more than the tier 10? Interesting. Basically, what these changes do is making you fight closer, uh, closer range, instead of sniping with it. Because currently, you can effectively snipe with the in-between reloads, right? 
and this will kind of nerf it. Uh, this will nerf it at sniping. I think up close, you're not gonna like mi like short distance. This is not even really that big of a nerf. But you're gonna be shooting just as fast, and up close, it's not gonna matter. This is basically nerfing the sniping brigado. And another thing you have to realize is that um, removing the gun rammer just means that they're gonna use the vents every time, right? Vents optics first step. So I don't even think this is that big of a nerf. This seems crazier, but is it? So fucking weird. The 105. I don't know. I uh, engine power seems a bit too much, maybe. But I don't think this is such a huge deal. I don't think it's such a big. Poland added the premium for super test. Whoop de doo. Okay, 430 dispersion during movement. All different. This all this is all good nerfs. I'm 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 more weirded out that it didn't lose any armor. Because the 440U lost some armor, but not enough. But the 430 at tier 9 did not lose any armor. It's it's okay, nerf. It's a hard this nerf is a hard is is hard to visualize. Because it's it's just like it's only the dispersion. So you have to wait longer to be fully aimed whilst playing. But how much does it really affect a Russian tank? <laughs> Look at these this is this is also fucking big numbers. I just wish that the, once again the armor would go down a bit. But this is this is pretty big. Thirty three percent is a pretty big nerf. So it's, it's a good thing, obviously. It makes them even more brawling, right? KV three boys. The promised land. KV three buffs. Turret armoring slightly more accurate and better aim time. Is this all we needed? <laughs> I'm not sure, but at least we got some buffs on the KV three, I guess. Okay, ST one buffs. This is the weirdest one. Because I don't think this thing needs a nerf or a buff or anything. But it just got better. But also less accurate. But it shoots faster. So it basically becomes better at the job it has. Right? It just became better at what it almost was already good at. This nerf is not going to do too much. Uh, this gun is the is not the top gun, I think. This, this is the D25T. T yeah, T That's the shit gun, boys. That is the... Stock gun. The stock gun got buffed. This is like the what the, the IS gun. KV4. Good old KV4. Armoring on the turret. No armoring on the hull? On a KV4? Was the hull really that good? Apparently. Uh the Ziz gun became more accurate. That's good. Decreased the dispersion by 38! Jesus! Okay. So it's uh you need way less aim time. While you're moving your turret, that's always good, always nice. Oh, dude, they got a. It shaved off over a second of reload. That's pretty big. And the aiming time went from 2.9 to 2.3. Wow, that gun is actually pretty good now. Holy fuck! This is the same IS gun, by the way. Don't mind this. This is not important. That's this gun. Actually, pretty sweet now. I hope they fix the mini Steve, mini Steve turret. I guess this is kind of a thing now because you could use this 390 gun. On the tier on the KV4 now as well, if you wanted to. With 217, 270. This is kind of a thing, actually. Might be a thing. If you want to have the 390, but this is looking really juicy. Because this gun was already pretty nice. It's just the, that the tank itself was shit, but the gun was good. And now better armor. And way better values on your gun. That's pretty good. Okay, it's the IS gun again. Let's see. Decreased dispersion in the movement. Uh, halter first, halter first speed went up four degrees. It's a pretty, 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 pretty big buff. So again, it became less accurate, but it shoots faster and aims. Oh, this is a really nice buff. Going from two point nine to two point five is really nice. This is also big, by the way. Two point nine to two point three is disgusting. That's so good. That's like medium aim time. Uh, but this is also good. And then the hull and the turret, interesting. The USA D77. The fuck is that? Sounds familiar. What's this again? It sounds super familiar. Wasn't this the 57 heavy premium thingy? Is that it? I think so. All right, T42. Literally just got the gun buffs, and that's all it needed, to be honest. So that's good. We go up to 208 base pen. Still not great. 245, fucking aim time, 
Milam knife. It's, it's looking pretty good. I'm not sure if this is enough. I'm not, I'm not sure. I think the 245 might be okay. I think this should have been like 220 or something. It doesn't make much sense to me that it can't be f that, that these guys get 217 and this sucker is still behind here with 208. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So maybe this should have also been like 217, 220. Everything else looks good though. Uh, M103. Let's see. Dispersions are down. From the roof. Nice. The reloads are down. And the aim time went to 2.5. Improve the armoring of the T140 turret. Is that the top turret? I could never fucking tell. And the hull got better. Hmm. Interesting. Hull armoring better. Version. Ha armoring on the hull could be really big. Because they already have a really annoying design. They both this tank and this tank have like a bathtub design. And you gotta be really careful improving the armoring on those suckers, because that could be super toxic. Like super toxic. Just the just the way the, the, the bathtub is designed. It's really annoying to deal with. So you have to be careful in actually improving the armor, you know. Uh decrease the dispersion. This is all really nice buffs. This makes the gun handling so much nicer. Vila went to 8.8. .8. Ooh. Ooh. 8.8 .8 second base reload on the E5 gun is pretty good. Hmm. Interesting. Steel Hunter. I hope Steel Hunter is good. The main thing that drew me off Steel Hunter last time was all the people cheating. <laughs> so if they can address that, I'll be playing it. I also kind of need to play it to get the other tank, the Object 277 or whatever. Whatever the hell it was called. Uh, the bonds is stupid. It should have been uh, tier five and up. Should have gotten. They should have. Th the system is fine. The system is fine, where you can only earn X amount on every tank every week, and you earn it by being in the top three or the, the top half. I think that's a good system, kind of like ranked. But they should have applied this to lower tiers or less bonds. So if you win a battle in your top three in a tier 10, you get seven bonds. You could have easily made this like two bonds for winning a tier five game. Stuff like that, right? So tier five and six is like two bonds. Uh, tier seven and eight is like four or five bonds. And then tier nine is like six bonds. And then tier 10 is seven bonds. You, you, you get what I'm saying here, right? So tier nine wins top 10, you get four bonds, three bonds at tier eight. And it's, you know, two at uh, seven and one at tier six and Five. That's what they should have done. I think this is this is too this is this is too dumb. Putting it only at tier ten is super dumb. Like really, really dumb. The medium changes I think is a bit odd that the four thirty armor didn't go down a bit tier nine, and the armor on the four thirty U turret is not enough of a decrease. Should have been more. It's, it's hard to hit, and now you still need to hit it with the same the same rounds that will pen it will still pen it. There's, they didn't allow more shots to pen it. It's still above a certain threshold where it still fucks with people. So that that armored nerf was dumb. The gun nerf seems okay, and the gun nerf in the four forty also seemed okay. Uh, wheels vehicles. I mean, pff, I'm I definitely I, I like the one where they lose speed for losing a wheel, like significant speed. I think that's cool. I still think the tier 10 should, and tier 9 should not have anywhere near full fuel range. I think this should be hard capped in fuel ranges so that they actually have to drive around to be useful. I, I absolutely hate that the tier 10 can get over full fuel range with uh, really good equipment. I think it's the dumbest thing and they haven't addressed that at all. So, uh, Pearl River, I mean, they have to play it first before we really see anything. And also, uh, I said it before, but they keep adding maps. And that's that's cool. That's what you know. A game always needs more maps. But I think they should start removing maps again, and or give us an extra ban slot. Because the more maps they introduce, the less my bans matter, right? Having three map or having two map bans, and there's only ten ten, uh, ten maps, probably too powerful. But I think we're reaching kind of the edge of where the map bans are useful. <laughs> I'm so glad they're in the game. Don't get me wrong, but I think they should man up and start removing some maps that are eight. Like, remove mines from high tiers. Right? Remove mines from high tiers already. You can do it, buddy. So, yeah. We'll have to see about the wheelies, the maps. Yep. I think that's about it. It's like, it's a, it's a significant patch. It's a lot. It's a lot. Also, equipment. I, I, I'm not too keen on the equipment changes because it, it, it effectively nerfs people with a, it effectively nerfs good people 
and people that have a lot of, have a lot of knowledge about the game. If you start adding equipment to negate bushes and stuff like this, you are really fucking with some core values of the game. And I don't think that's a good direction, but we'll have to see. I need to play, obviously, I need to play a whole lot of games with it before I can have a proper opinion on it. But taking it at like face value, I think they're fucking too much with important things. Like negating bushes and stuff like that, that's going to be really, that, that could be really troublesome. Could be. Might not be a big deal. Everybody might still stick to the same free equipment slots. Uh, which is like the gun rammer, optics, and vert saps. And like fence here and there. But yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, not too big a fan of that at the moment. But maybe after I play more, I'll have a different view on that. We'll have to see. It's still a, still a really big patch. It's one of the biggest patches we've had in a long time. With actual balance to, to individual tanks, which is... A good sign like if anything it's a good sign that they're individually rebalancing tanks now that, because hopefully it's the first patch of many where they do that the new equipment negates the nerf to the 430s how does the gun rammer suddenly decrease dispersion because i don't see it there's a lot of equipment to change diversion values yes but will that replace the equipment do you think that 430s are gonna lower their fuel range and reloads to Get the dispersion back because if if that's what you're saying then they're still being nerfed right those russian tanks got dispersion nerfs of like 33 percent if they use equipment to negate that then they directly nerfed themselves in few range or reloads that's still a nerf i think um and the equipment 2.0 is mostly gonna affect scouts scouts is one because scouts will very likely just drop a rammer like yeah I actually think most people might drop rammers because like when you really think about it, you're not going to continuously f shoot your guns on a lot of tanks, right? Even like things with high reloads, like shit barns, losing like 10% on your reloads is not going to matter too much because most of the time you're not going to be sh firing one, firing two, firing three. That's going to be wait times. RT probably got a whole bunch of buffs. RT got a whole bunch of buffs because what the fuck are they doing now? Ventilation, rammer, camo net or something? Like, they'll 100% get better. RT 100% got buffed with 2.0 equipment. Um, and I feel heavies and like, uh, let's say heavy TDs or assault TDs will probably change up. And that's another thing I'm worried about. I think it could be extremely toxic if we're facing bobjects that basically cannot be tracked. <laughs> Like, do we really want to live in a world where you cannot keep tracking a 268 version 4? Is that really the world we want to live in? Like, I, I don't think I want to live in that world where we cannot permanently track some tanks with fast reloads. Yeah, just shoot the weak spots. If I could, if I, if I could predict a couple of things, I think uh, wheelies are actually going to be even more toxic. Somehow. I hope not. I think so. I think... I think things like Bob Jacks, Tortoises, T95s are going to be super toxic on certain maps, right? If you're on Melanovka, no one cares. But meeting a Bob Jack or a T95 on Ensk, you can go fuck yourself now, I think, if those repairs get out of hand. I think medium tanks probably got nerfed with equipment 2.0. Because they stayed the same where it pulled up most other tanks. Right? I think medium tanks are the ones that are going to use the least of the new equipment. Yeah. I think RT got buffed with equipment 2.0, probably. It's going to be a wild world, I think. Uh, speaking of playing, what the fuck was I playing last time? Oh, I was playing this boy, wasn't I? Yeah, I was playing this guy. This guy. Yeah, that was how... Yes.